Welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. We are honored uh, to uh, have joining us right now the um, former governor of the great uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, Governor Jim Gilmore, who is also the um, president and CEO of uh, Free Congress Foundation. You could check him out at freecongress.org. Governor, welcome, sir. Good, Steve. Thank you very much. And also our program is branded American Opportunity and can be found at AmericanOpportunity.org. Okay, gotcha. AmericanOpportunity.org as well. Uh, you know, uh, when, when you were uh, elected uh, to the uh, to the State House in Virginia back in 98, um, it was the first complete uh, GOP control of the, uh, the executive branch of government in the state. And yesterday, of course, you witnessed, along with the rest of uh, the country, the election of Terry McAuliffe. Um, give us your read on, on, on how that... Uh, how that happened and, and what this means for the uh, state of Virginia and, and, and what signals it sends, if any, uh, 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 what kind of barometer it might be nationally. Well, I think that uh, the election of Governor McAuliffe is going to be very significant. Uh, the governor of Virginia is very strong. He has the enormous, if not almost total, uh, control over the politics of the state. Uh, he will be very formidable in uh, helping to deliver uh, Virginia to Hillary Clinton. But... I do not believe that Hillary Clinton is the inevitable winner in 2016 in Virginia. Uh, I think that as long as the Republicans do their job and begin to alter some things and change some things, we'll carry Virginia, which is a representative of the United States, and we can win the presidency in 2016. Right, let me, uh, let's go back to the election. Of course, uh, the polls had it uh, eight points, ten points in favor of, of, uh, of uh, the, the Democrat, who the eventual winner, Terry McAuliffe. And, of course, we saw the results last night, much, much, much tighter, a point or two difference. Um, and and, and uh, Ken Cuccinelli was closing. He made it a referendum towards the end on Obamacare. The exit polls that I saw show that 53 percent of those who voted uh, were against Obamacare and 45 favored it. Um, was it lack of support? Of course, he was out, outraised and outspent, I think, 12 or 15 to 1. Uh, did the, as Rand Paul said to me earlier today on the show, uh, he felt the Republican establishment let uh, Ken Cuccinelli down. Do you believe that that's the case? You know, I'd have to look and see exactly what they did or they did not do, do for him. But, uh, you know, clearly uh, the, the RNC probably gave more money elsewhere. Uh, I, I think the important point is this. The reason this race got close was because uh, the, the people of Virginia began to uh, see exactly what Obamacare was doing to them. Uh, their insurance policies were being canceled this past week. Uh, people were beginning to realize that the, the bare assertion by the president that they were going to get, keep their own doctor was not true. They were then looking to say, well, wait a minute, we're, we're, getting, we're not going to have any real choices, we, any private choices. We're going to have to run this government program. They didn't like that. And then finally, they saw that the government program was ineffective. And so people began to turn back to the Republican candidate again. And I think that uh, Ken Cuccinelli is very wise to say uh, at the end, listen, this is a referendum on Obamacare, because he probably knew the mood of the people were shifting that way at the end. What do you think, uh, Governor, of uh, the uh, reelection of Chris Christie by about uh, 30 points? And, um, you know, he, he's called himself a conservative. Uh, Rand Paul today called him a moderate who would have uh, um, uh, problems with um, winning in the Republican primaries. When you talk about 2016, do you envision Chris Christie as a force? Yes. Uh, the governor uh, has had a great personal victory in New Jersey. Uh, it's a, a Democratic state. He was elected overwhelmingly, and I, I congratulate him, and I wouldn't take anything away from him. Uh, I've, I've tried to think about why this, this election did occur. Because when you look at it and you think this is, this is counterintuitive, why would this be going on this way? And, you know, the answer I'm getting out of my friends in the Northeast is that, well, the first, he was an incumbent uh, and did not run against a strong opponent. And second, uh, he had been perceived as being very effective in his response to the storm issue. Someone actually made an analogy to me, and they said, well, do you think that Rudy Giuliani would have been elected uh, just a couple of years after the 9-11 attack? And the answer is, of course, because of his perception of being responsive to that attack. Well, likewise, Chris Christie was responsive to the storm issue, even though by getting very close to the president uh, on that visit and uh, being quite flattering of the president in the middle of the Romney campaign was not received well by everybody. But uh, I think the people of New Jersey thought that he was being effective. And do you, and, and you believe uh, that... Uh he has a, a legitimate shot at winning uh, those primaries uh, should he run in them and, and emerging as uh, the, uh, the nominee, especially possibly if uh, there are many candidates to his right who might split the vote. 
No, I think it's too soon to know whether uh, Governor Christie is going to be an effective candidate at the national level. Uh, we, we know uh, what he t- just achieved in New Jersey. Uh, I have speculated as to why I think why, whether right. that translates into other far, far-flung states like Virginia or South Carolina or Oklahoma or other places or New Mexico is remains to be seen. Uh, I think it will depend upon what issues come before the people uh, in the 2016 election, which, uh, of course, would take me ultimately to what I believe the Republican Party must do in order to to make itself competitive again, and I'm ready to discuss that in any time. Yeah, I was just going to say we we're up against a hard break. Uh, can we get you back next week, and let's have a discussion, uh, a nice 15-minute uh, discussion on that, sir? I'd be pleased to do that, All right. because We've, unless the Republican Party changes, we, we're going to have problems going forward, but we can succeed. Okay, I, I'm, that's a great way to end it, and I thank you for coming on, Governor Jim Gilmore, uh, former governor of Virginia and the president of the Free Congress Foundation, Free Congress. Uh, .org. We'll speak to you very soon, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Coming back, folks, on the Steve Malsberg Show, another big hour to go. Charles Hurt will join us on Newsmax TV and radio.